Hello and welcome back. I, hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney. Today we are going to cover half rectangle triangles, HRTs. No, not half square triangles. These are working with rectangles. I'm going to tell you right now, I will screw up in the middle of this video and call it a half square triangle by mistake. Half rectangle triangle just doesn't roll off my tongue and I have to think about it every time I say it. Let's call them HRTs. This is what they look like. This is actually two different ones. The difference with working with half rectangle triangles is that they can be flipped different directions. I've got the green on both on my right side. As you can see, this HRT has the angle from the upper left to the lower right. This one is upper right to lower left. So it's going to be very important to understand what your pattern needs. So if you're working with a pattern, make sure you understand how many of each you need. Are you dealing with all you know, upper right to lower left or maybe all of the other? It just depends. It can be kind of cool. What happens a lot of times is we combine two of them that have the angle the opposite direction to make this cool triangle which with very nice points on it. Keep that in mind and I'm going to show you this and the differences as we go through things. Half rectangle triangles are in a one to two ratio. Today I'm working on making a finished two by four inch HRT. So I'm two inches this way, four inches this way. And in this case, these aren't finished. So they're two and a quarter by four and a quarter. The methods that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how if you if you want to go scrappy and do just one pair, or if it's really important, you have one set that's ones this way and ones that way exactly like this, and that's all you need, then the method of using a ruler or a template will be handy for that, especially if you're going super scrappy and you're grabbing stuff out of your scrap bin. If you're going to be making a lot of pairs or needing a lot of them, doing two at a time becomes much more efficient. And you can do two at a time this way or two at a time that way. Then the third method is going to be using a specialty ruler intended to make HRTs um, very efficiently as well. So stick with me on this. To do a half square triangle and you want to go scrappy or you only need, and you need two maybe that are opposite direction, then having a template comes in handy. And there are rulers out there that you can buy for this purpose. I don't happen to have one to show you. Guess what though? It's really easy to make your own. Use a, I don't, recommend paper. It's just not thick enough in my opinion, especially if you're going to be cutting around it or marking around it. Um, this is a manila folder, but if you're really lucky, you can get some template. <laughs> can you hear it? It's like a stiff plastic, but it's really easy to mark on with a marker and cut. So if you want to make your own and you're going to be using a lot, go ahead and get some of this. It usually comes in big sheets. Otherwise, we're going to go the good old fashioned simple way. We still, even if we're making one pair alone, we still need to start with a rectangle. And I want a finished two by four. So my rectangle that I'm going to start with that gives me lots of wiggle room to trim needs to be three by six. We added one inch to the short side and two inches to the long side to get our starting rectangle. I'm going to just grab this. I'm going to cut a three inch strip of this and I'm using my paper, um, paper rotary cutter not my fabric. Okay. And boy, I thought I got that little circle light to go away. 
and I see I still have it somewhere. And then this is six inch. So we're gonna cut a three by six inch triangle. Then we're going to cut it in half. Triangle, corner to corner. And you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to have two of these. Guess what? You don't. Let me show you. I make sure I mark on these. So finished F, two by four, finished two by four. And that way we can take these and we can put them on our fabric. And you can put this here and get a marker and mark around it this way. And this is what the good old days we used to do. Get out a pair of scissors and cut it. Or <laughs> you can still use a rotary cutter. You just gotta be very careful to stay on your lines or get a ruler then and put it on your line. Oops, that one's not quite big enough. And that will give you that side. Then you get your other fabric and you do it there. And you're thinking, well, fine. That gives me a left to right half square triangle, a left to right half square triangle, but what if I need another one with the same stuff that is right to left? No worries, guess what? <laughs> Flip it over. You don't even need to cut another template. You can use it, just need to make sure that, okay, when I'm doing this one, when I'm cutting and marking, I've got my text up. When I want to cut the other one, I have the text down. So we mark those. I'm going to mark that. Here's my longer ruler. So this one I already marked. This is what I said. And you, if you use the plastic template, you can just cut around the template. Um, maybe use a little um, glue, like uh, they make glue in a tube, not a tube. Shoot, I usually have some around here, but you know how it is right now. It's, uh, it's like your lipstick or your um, chapstick. It comes in a tube. And that way you can get your your glue kind of on and put your template on it and cut around it. Just be careful that you're not continuing to cut into that plastic or your piece here, because otherwise you are going to eventually get smaller and smaller. And I'm gonna do the same for this. And then we could easily, okay, so that was that one. Now, if I want another matching pair, I can flip it over. Ah, am I gonna be a oopsie? I picked a piece of fabric where I'm not going to be able to quite make it work. This is why this works good for scrappy. So then you can, if I, oh, if I'd move that over a little, I could have. But that way you can get very scrappy, mix and match your pieces of fabric. I'm gonna go cut this one out and then we're gonna come back and put them together. I have one of the pairs that I cut separate triangles on, and now we line them up on the angle. Get your corners lined up. And this one actually is the piece where my one triangle was just a little bit short, but that's okay. I, I'm gonna be able to make it through here. And we pin this. So these little babies don't be shifting all over the place. And now you take it to the sewing machine and you sew a quarter of an inch on that line. Then you come back and 
This is the opposite one. So be aware. I apologize. I'm flipping. This, that one was right to left. This is the opposite one that I also created. I created a pair, so I have one of each. And this is what it's going to look like. And yes, it's going to be really ugly down here and up here where things don't match. That's okay, because the whole point of this is we are trimming it up. And I realize now with this dark fabric, it's going to be a struggle for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab my green and orange one. And yeah, it really doesn't matter. It's the same process, whether you're working with your block left to right or right to left. Now it's time to square this sucker up. Unlike your half square triangles, where you've got a nice angle that you can use on your ruler, half rectangle triangles make squaring them up just a tad different and a little more challenging, but not that big of a deal. You just need a few tools in your toolbox. I right now love this ruler. It's a four by eight. And with this, we need to trim this down to a four and a half by two and a half because we want a finished four by two. So that takes care of our quarter inch seams on all sides. Unlike the half square triangle where you get your ruler up here and get it right on the angle and then you get the other end on your angle. Nope, nope, nope. Do not pretend or think that you're going to be able to use any of your angled lines on your ruler. Instead, we need this mark here, your, your seam for your angle, to be a quarter inch in and a quarter inch down from where we're trimming. And if you're lucky, my ruler does have lots of marks for my, actually it's eight, 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 <laughs> eighth inch squares. And I have this other ruler that's a little bigger and it actually has a little dot. To help you know where they're at, you can use some markies, especially if you're doing a lot of these. This will come in really handy. If you're doing ones or twos, okay, maybe not a big deal, but having your ruler marked when you're doing a lot of them will allow you to not have to think so hard every time you're squaring one up. I've seen some people use this fine point Sharpie, which in my opinion, doesn't look so fine point. It leaves a pretty heavy mark on your ruler because what we're gonna do is mark your, your dot where your edge of your angles need to be and then we're gonna mark your two and, a, two and a half and four and a half lines. I find this too, too heavy to mark my ruler because then I don't see my fine point. I have this uh, Pigma Micron 01 um, marker instead. And don't worry, <laughs> I know you're thinking, I don't want to mark my ruler. This marking stuff comes off very easily with a lemon essential oil. I got lots of that around here, so I use that. Otherwise, if you happen to be a person that does your nails and you have fingernail polish remover, that takes it off as well. So this will not be permanent on your ruler. What I'm going to do is before I put that there, I'm going to mark my ruler. I'm going to go a quarter inch in and a quarter inch down, and I'm going to put a little dot there. It's not too big, but I can see it. Then on my other end down here, it's like, okay, okay, where does it need to be? Easiest thing to do is do one of two things. Take your rule, your, <laughs> not your ruler, take your marker and mark your ruler on the two, two and a half inch line. I don't like to do that. And I just marked on my ruler. So I am going to quick mark, get rid of that line. I don't like to do that. If I were to do it, I would mark it on the slightly outside of my two and a half and my four and a half, but I have this really cool tape that you can get. <laughs> it comes in a variety of colors. I think I also have a green somewhere. I'm going to use the pink 
today. This is really cool tape, and this is what it's intended to be used for, to mark your ruler where you need it so you don't have to think about it every time you pick up your ruler. And I actually put it right on just to the left of my line because I still want to see my line when I line it up. And where's my scissors? And so I'm, <laughs> it's really good scissors. I'm marking just to the left of the two and a half inch line on my ruler. And if I can find the end again, it's just like scotch tape. You lose the end if you don't have a dispenser. And <clears throat> the other end needs to be four and a half. Now I can look at my ruler more easily and know this is where I'm going to need to fully trim my triangle. Up here, quarter down, quarter in. I need the same down here in this corner. In that case, I'm gonna go a quarter inch to my right from my two and a half and a quarter inch up. There's my dot. There's my dot. And why does that, uh, I'm double checking it here. There's my quarter inch. Yep, that's right. It just seems bigger down here than that angle up there. Yeah, is what it is. Then, you, now that you've got your ruler marked and ready to go, your quarter inch in and down dot up there goes on that seam at the top. And down here, you, boy, when you got dark fabrics, it's hard to see. You make sure it's on the ruler, the dot down here at the bottom. Dot to dot is your angle. You wanna make sure you have enough fabric all the way around on both edges and yep, I do, such that, now we're gonna trim one side. Okay. Whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie doopsie. I didn't quite get there. And I, <laughs> my tape, put that over there. You're gonna flip it around to the left. Now this is a nice squared edge that you can put your two and a half and four and a half inch measurement on, which is right there. It's right inside my, my tape. I don't want my tape on that line. I find that makes it harder to square it up. My dot down here is still on the seam. My dot up here still on my seam. I have plenty to trim. And there we go. I now have a perfect half rectangle triangle. And you'll notice at the top and the bottom, your, excuse me, your seam, your angled seam is not corner to corner. It's not like your half square triangle. It's a quarter inch in from both sides. That way, when you put this all together and your seam hits here and here, it's gonna be a perfect angle. So that is how we trim up. And I showed you the method. If you're doing scrappy half square tri... <laughs> I knew I would screw that up. Scrappy or single half rectangle triangles where you need only only one, or you wanna have them scrappy. Now I'm gonna show you the method where you can do two at a time. I finished my HRTs using the template. So as you can see here, by using the template, one template and cutting individual triangles and putting them together, I can get one of each direction if I wanted. We could go scrappy, and now I can do my one V and it's that. And if I needed to make another pair with another set of fabrics, it's very easy to do with that method. I'm guessing most of the time you're going to need a lot more than a pair, especially if you're not going scrappy. 
In that case, <clears throat> we're going to start with two squares of fabric. Yep, just the same as the size we used to create our template before. I want a two by four finished HRT, which means these rectangles need to be three by six. I added one inch to the finished width and two inches to the finished height to get the size of the rectangle I need to start, um, to start with and be able to then trim it down to get my finished size correctly. What we're gonna do is, this one, similar to my, <laughs> I got this one marked all over, there we go. Similar to what we did with the half square triangles is we're going to draw a line corner to corner. And in this case, I'm going to draw corner to corner, upper right to lower left. Once again, you need to understand in your pattern what, what ones you need. So we're gonna do that on this pair. Okay, I've got my line there. I did the same thing with another one because I actually want a couple of each. So I'm gonna show you, oh, that one's a little off when I was drawing it. I'll draw it a little darker here for you. This set I've got upper left to lower right. Know what you need. Then we're gonna put these on top of, put right sides together. And if you did this, <laughs> This isn't gonna work very well because when you open it up, you're gonna have like, I don't know, like an arrow, a point. Well, well, that could be interesting for a block, but that's not what we want. What you want to do is put it corner to corner on top of the other rectangle. So this one is gonna go this way. This one, if you do that, you go, oh yeah, that's not right. I'm supposed to be able to see the triangle behind it, we're gonna lay it this way. Yep, get our corners, corners to match. Then I pin them, yes I do, because otherwise these babies will shift on you. And what we're gonna do is what we do with our half square triangles, is you're going to stitch a quarter inch on either side of this line. So right now we are making a pair of half square, <laughs> a pair of half rectangle triangles that go this upper right to lower left and another pair upper left to lower right. We're gonna end up with two of each. You're gonna go do that and then what you're gonna do is, actually, I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Now that I've sewn a quarter inch on either side of the line I drew, then, as we do with other things, you're gonna cut on the line. I finger press, and then I take them to the iron and press. You're gonna wanna be very careful and press don't iron because you don't want to stretch this out. And there we go. We have two of them that are identical. This set I have pressed. So with one pair of triangle or um, yeah, one pair of rectangles, we have this set and then the other ones we did the opposite direction and we have this pair. As you can see, we've got, yeah. So I'll put it so the green is on the same side. The green's on the right and we're going upper, right, lower, left, upper, left, lower, right. So that's what we ended up with after we did our marking, we sewed on quarter inch and we cut in between and pressed. 
Now we need to trim these. And the trimming up is going to be just like I showed you before. But in case you jumped ahead and didn't see how I trimmed the first sets that we did for doing one at a time, I will show you again. I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna work with this one. What we need to do is trim this up to two and a half by four and a half. And my ruler is ready. The difference between a half square triangle and a half rectangle triangle is you can't just put a line in your ruler on the line here and trim it up. No, no, you need to pay attention to your quarter inch on each angle. It's really handy to use a Sharpie or I prefer the Micron Pigma Micron 01 because it's a finer marker and I'm going to mark on my ruler. Don't worry, this comes off with nail polish remover or uh, lemon essential oil. You're going to want to place a mark a quarter inch down and a quarter inch in from your ruler. I'm gonna put my dot right there. That is where you need to line it up with your seam in the upper right corner. I've already marked my two and a half by four and a half to make it super easy for me to have that reference. You can use this marker or a heavier one. I prefer not to do that. I want to really see that exact line on my ruler. So I have these handy dandy little tapes. And this is what it's meant for, is a clear tape that you can put on your ruler to reference where you need to cut so you don't have to struggle finding that line every time. I put my tape just below or to the left of the line I need to see. Now, we have our quarter inch in from there. Now we need our quarter inch in from the lower left. So there's that. So we're gonna do one, two and a quarter. So it's, it's two and a quarter over and then a quarter up. So there's, there's my second dot. So it's actually, It's, yeah, two and a quarter over, and then it'd be your four and a quarter down. That's your mark right there. Now we do the trimming up. And this is for the upper right to lower left. We get our dots on our angles. And what you need to do is, easiest thing is get your dot in the upper right, and then shift it down and keep the dot here. You need to adjust your ruler so that you can trim two and a half inches and four and a half inches all the way around. So the way I have it right now, ooh, ooh, I just barely am hitting that two and a half inch over on my left. So I'm gonna shift this up just a tad, making sure I still have wiggle room over here to trim and I'm keeping my dots on my angles. Yep, I don't have a lot to trim, but I do. That there, trimming up, okay? And then you flip it around and you're gonna do the same thing, except this one's easier because you can use your four and a half and your two and a half inch to square up because you already have a square edge and that should mean your dots on both ends are on your seams, and mine are. So I can trim up that one. Okay, there we go. And as I noted, your seam is not going to go right into the corner. It's gonna be a quarter inch in, because that takes, that means when you sew your quarter inch seam, your angle is accurate. Sweet, that was easy with our upper right to lower left. Well, guess what? Now we need to trim the other one. Huh, well, buggers. <laughs> my dots don't match up with my angle and doing that sure in heck isn't going to work. You can do one of two things, whichever you're most comfortable with. You can either continue to use this ruler 
and instead add two more dots. Your dot is going to be a quarter inch in from your lower right, which would be your... <laughs> ah, too many lines! Your quarter inch in, and it'd be four in a... Whoops, got that wrong. Where's my little... Yeah, there we go. Four and a quarter down mark and a quarter in, which is right there. Okay, so you can mark that. And then up here is going to be a quarter inch down and two and a quarter over, which is right there. And you're still going to have your two and a half and four and a half that works for you. So you just need to remember when you put this on your ruler, you're going to do it this way. If this causes any confusion by having separate dots in the same section, then what you can do is you can, this ruler doesn't work well for that because it's not long enough. But let's take my 12 by six inch ruler. Assuming I had, <laughs> yeah, assuming I had my dots up here for this angled thing, fine. I can flip it over and then I can create my markings over here. For this ruler, it would be at eight and a half by two and a half inch mark. And I do my, my dots this way. I think that can be just as confusing because you're looking at the ruler with this eight inch mark. And it's like, okay, I've decided it's just as easy and it will make sense to you when you start doing it because obviously, <laughs> Your dots are going to show you which one you're using. I'm going to stick with this method. So there I get my dot in my upper left on my angle and my dot down here. Once again, I need to make sure I have plenty to trim. Uh-oh, uh-oh, over here on this side, I don't. So I need to just slide my ruler down to make sure I have plenty to trim. And your sides, if you've got a tight quarter inch, you're not gonna have much to trim. So maybe when you sew your angled seams, stitch a little tad less than a quarter inch. And if you're marking where you're stitching, stitch on the inside of that. That gives you a little more wiggle room to trim. And then we flip this, I get my dot back up here, my two and a half and four and a half. And I just looked at this dot down here and went, uh, oh, nope, I'm looking at my dot over here and my dot up there. So you end up with quite a bit to trim off on the top and the bottom but on the left and the right for your two and a half, there's really not a lot of wiggle room. And there you go. Now you've got a trimmed up for each direction. So you just go ahead and trim up your other triangles. This method works. There's no reason to go out and buy another ruler. You can mark this one and be able to do this very easily. But now I'm gonna show you another method where you don't have to mark your ruler you use a little bit less fabric and it's super simple to trim up. You will have to buy another ruler though that's special for your half rectangle triangles. Now that we've done methods where you use your own ruler, you create your own templates to create your half rectangle triangles, your HRTs, this method does use a specialty ruler. We're going to be using Deb Tucker's split Rect ruler. Is that focus? I think it is. There it goes. <laughs> this ruler allows you to know what size. We're going to be working with strips of fabric. So this one is very handy when you need lots of them. The other two methods, ah, maybe you only need one or two. You're doing a sampler block and you just need maybe a couple. The other methods work great. This can be really handy when you need to make a lot because we're dealing with strips of fabric. 
The other method, I did cut six inch strips of fabric to use to cut my three by six inch rectangles, but depending on how many you need, you could just cut those out of pieces of fabric. On the ruler here, on one side of it, I will, yeah, I'll take some pictures so you can see this because you're not gonna be able to see this very well here. One side of the ruler, let's do this. There, that helps a little. One side of the ruler, the ruler that has the angled side on it tells you based on the size of the half, the finished half, <laughs> HRT, <laughs> half rectangle triangle, the HRT, the finished size, it will tell you what size strips to cut. We're working with a two by four finished unit, so we're gonna cut five inch strips. I'm gonna cut my strip out, and then there's other lines in here that tell us what to do, how to cut it, and how to trim it up without needing to put dots on your ruler, lines on your rulers, Everything you need is right here in a single ruler. This ruler goes up to a four by eight finished ruler, sorry, a four by eight finished unit, four by eight HRT. That's what this ruler does. Um, I didn't check. Would not surprise me if she has a bigger one, four bigger ones, but that's a pretty significant size HRT. And so we're working with strips we need to do our usual. We're gonna square up our fabric. We're messing with our trusty green. We're gonna have a lot of these green and orange. So I'm putting, hmm, doesn't look like it's too far off. Oh yeah, it kinda is. So this ruler I'm putting across the bottom to get straight there. Uh. This ruler, I'm butting up against it to make sure I get a good seam. I could probably shove that over a little more so I don't lose quite as much. I'm gonna move it a little more. I'm gonna just shove it over so I don't lose as much over here and trim off as little as possible. Remove that. And there we go, we have a straight edge over there. And it told us we needed five inches. So I'm gonna cut a five inch strip of fabric. Okay. Now I have my five inch strip of green. And I am going to pin this. When I have a whole piece, it seemed really obvious what was the right side and wrong size. But when I start cutting them into little pieces, uh, not so much. And here is, whoops, that is not my five inch strip. This is my five inch strip of orange. And yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark the top. Now I know what the right side is on both of those. First thing I wanna do is trim up the difference with this one is we're used to working with everything, putting right sides together. In this case, for this set, I am going to put right sides up on both of them. I should have picked different fabric that was more obvious, but I'm putting right sides up or both of them down. The biggest thing is you want both pieces of fabric to be facing the same direction, either both up or both down. On my fabric together, right sides up, and then I took my little ruler here, we want this edge to be nice and straight. So I just did a quick square up on the edge. 
Whoops. <laughs> Don't know if that helped her. <laughs> Not. So we get a nice square edge. Then the way we're doing it this way is to get a half rectangle triangle where your angle is going from your upper left to your lower right. It's important to note that. We're going to flip the fabric a different way when we need to do the opposite. On your ruler, there's a big dark line. Place on edge of strip. Okay, telling us exactly what we need to do. The top should be at the top. Down here, it should be exactly where it said, two by four, finish unit, cut five inch strip. So whatever size you decided to cut, this should all line up. And isn't that just a nice little triangle? There we go. They're both right sides up. So if we take them apart, now they're right sides up. So if we're gonna put right sides together to sew, Flip this one up and put it on top of the other. And then kind of line up. This method, just like the other one, is going to give you room to trim up. That's why I love Deb Tucker's rulers. They give you room to trim up without excessive fabric. And that way you're much more accurate when you're done. This method with this ruler, you're trimming off a lot less fabric than with the other methods I've shown you. So that's very nice with this ruler. So if you're doing a lot of half rectangle triangles, the ruler might be worth the cost in the save in fabric. There we go. So we're gonna put those together and you're gonna sew a quarter inch and I always pin them. And now you're going, yeah, but now I don't have a straight edge. Uh, what's with that? No worries. Take your ruler. Turn it one, two. So flip it upside down. You're going to notice this other line here that says second trim guideline. That's going to go on your angle. And down here, there's a dark line that says second trim. You want that line at the bottom of your fabric, which will mean this will line up nice and neat on the angle. And you cut. And then once again, two pieces of fabric, right side up. So all you do is flip one on top of the other, kind of line up your corners there. It doesn't need to be perfect because you're gonna have wiggle room. And then you sew a quarter of an inch. And then you can just keep doing that as many of these half rectangle triangles that you need with the angle that direction. Take it to the sewing machine, I always pin mine. Then you can take it to the sewing machine. And if you're doing a lot of these, you can chain piece these. <laughs> yep. Put them in the sewing machine. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Put the next one under there. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There you go. And then when all is done, I'm going to, I'm going to move this fabric aside and I'm going to trim these up and press them. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the ruler to trim these up. Now that you have your pairs of triangles sewn together, we impress them. I didn't mention pressing before. Same thing. Most of the time I press to one direction, depending on whether there's a light or a dark. If I happen to have a lot of fabrics coming together in a point to combine things, it might be beneficial to press the seams open so there's not quite as much bulk. I rarely do that, but sometimes it's handy. Key thing is, if you press your seams open, uh, don't do any quilting stitch in the ditch. That just won't work very well. Now, I have those pressed, and now we go back to our ruler. There we go. Now, we were using the angled side for our cutting, and now we're gonna use this other side that has a lot of numbers and things on. Guess what? It has this wonderful line right down the middle that you put on the angle of your HRT 
and make sure that there's enough fabric all the way around for the size that you're doing. So we're doing a four, a two by four finished, meaning we need to trim this to two and a half by four and a half. Look at there. There's my two and a half. There's my four and a half. Room around the edges. My angle is there. Trim, flip it over, put our angle back on there. Now I should be able to keep this, the, the four and a half and two and a half inch lines right on my edge. Keep my angle there and trim. So much easier, in my opinion, than marking my own ruler and double checking it and having tape on it and making sure I'm exactly right. Everything's here that I need. Then what we do is you're going, great. You showed me how to make that half rectangle triangle. But what if I need the other direction? Okay, not a problem. This out of the way. In that case, I don't have another one of them done. What we're gonna do is do the opposite of what you had here. So I told you at the beginning to start with, you work with both fabrics facing the same direction. In this case, I had both fabrics facing up. You could have started with both fabrics facing down. That's fine, but whatever you did, you're gonna do the opposite to get the other angled side. So in this case, all I do is flip over my fabric. So now I've got right sides facing down. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Line up the left. I can flip this over and get my angle. And I don't have to do two of these at once. This will work just fine to make one pair. So now we've got, right now you have to remember, now you've got right sides down. So what I would do is I'd flip it up, I'd take them apart, and then now I know both right sides are facing up, so I can flip them over and put them on top of each other, right sides together. So that's what I did here. Right sides down, I flipped them so they're right side up, separated them, and then flip them. So the key thing to note is I've got a flat edge of the top and the other fabric, the other triangle is a flat edge at the bottom. And I'm gonna put these together and show you how we're gonna end up with squares in the opposite direction. I now have my other pairs of triangles sewn together. So now this block is upper right, lower left, sewn together and pressed, and now we're ready to trim them. Super simple, same thing. You put this other side that has all the measurements on your square. This time there's a line going left to right. And here, two by four finished unit. Yep, that's the line that you want to be in the middle. You still have plenty of room because you see your two and a half and your four and a half inch line. So you still have plenty of room to trim. Trim here. Flip it over. Put the ruler back on in this case. You can line up your four and two and a half, four and a half and two and a half inch line. Keep that angle on and trim. And there we go. Now with this method, just a matter of flipping your fabric. You're doing five, in this case, we're doing a two by four finished HRT. We used five inch strips of fabric using the ruler, two strips facing up, and we were able to do our cut and put them together and we got that. 
I then reversed it and put my fabric down and I got the opposite. So there you have it. And everything you need to do or know is in the ruler. It comes in with instructions. I personally find this ruler well worth the cost if I'm dealing with a lot of HRTs. If I'm doing onesies and twosies, use the other methods. It works just fine. It just means you need to pay a little more attention with your ruler and making sure that everything is right as you trim it. And there we go. Now you are ready. So if you see a quilt out there that's got a bunch of angled rectangles, HRTs, don't freak out. They're not a big deal. And now you know plenty of ways to do them and you can choose the one that fits you, your skill level, the best. Thanks so much for watching and take care.